So John asked me this question. He saw a logo that was like this on YouTube and wanted to know how it was done. This is a more advanced use of trim pads. So let's break this down. I drew the shape once for the logo. I'm gonna hide this. Here's my path. All I did was add a trim pads. I then duplicated it. So make sure you got it selected. And I named it outer blue, so you can see the outer blue, and then the inner yellow is here. I selected this and hit Command or Control D to duplicate it. That created this. Before I duplicated it, I put a trim pads on it so that both of them had trim pads. So I only had to do it once. When you duplicate something, it duplicates all the effects. Here's where it gets a little tricky. They both have a trim path on them. And you'll notice my blue stroke is 121 pixels. My yellow stroke is only 85. That's what makes it look like a blue stroke on the outside because it's a thicker stroke and the yellow stroke on the inside is thinner, okay? So to get this look, I got it in my stroke options and I made a round cap and a round joint. That's what softened the edges and made the circle shape. The closer your draw on and draw off are, the smaller the trim path is gonna be. And as it goes around the curve and gets a little slower, that's why it's a little bit longer. I could fix that if I wanted for more keyframes, but that little bit of lag is what gives it character and life. So I like it, so I kept it like that. Now, there's only two simple expressions that make this whole thing work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this. Get rid of all my keyframes. Okay, here's what you're gonna look like when you've got your trim paths. And I'm gonna turn off my expression. I'm gonna start from scratch. So draw your whole shape the way you want the path to come in and then what your logo is gonna be. That's the first step. Then add a trim path to that. Now remember, select the shape in here that you want. You gotta have your selection arrow. Go add trim pads. You can get there from up there or from right over here. Add trim pads. So that when you duplicate this, Command D, you get the yellow inner stroke with the trim pads on it. The outer stroke has to be wider. Mine's 121 and my inner stroke is 85. So once you have your two strokes of different size, here's how you make this effect work. The, see the blue drawing on? That's my end, because remember, this is my start, that's my end. I wanted to draw on in this direction. So here's how it works. On the outer stroke, click the stopwatch, make sure your playhead's where you want it. I've got a keyframe here. Now, on my inner stroke, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, so that's either the Alt or Option key. Click on the stopwatch. Now, in this expression field, I've got a pick whip. So I'm going to drag my pick whip from the inner stroke to the stopwatch of the end of the outer stroke. You gotta click out of your expression field. Now, they draw on together because they're parented with that expression. That's the first point. So let's just say I do a second and a half. And there's my draw on. That's a little slow. So I'll just say it's a second. I'm gonna drag that and grab it. So here's the draw on. And both strokes are doing exactly what I want them to do. Now remember, once we hit here, that's where my logo starts. So I'm going to draw off up until that point. I want this one frame apart so that they're pretty close together. So it's gonna draw off. I'll show you what happens. If I go a little bit further and I start my draw off here, I go a little bit past it. Here's what the draw off is gonna look like. See how much thicker it is, the blue stroke? Because these are further apart. I want them close together so that they're thinner. 
see the difference. Once I go here and right here is where I want it to stop. So right there. So watch how much thinner this is now. And there's the rest of my draw on. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of those keyframes that you saw what's, that was just to see what's happening. All right, so one frame apart, click my stopwatch. Now here, I have to do the same expression. So my inner stroke, I hold down Alt or Option, I click the Start Stopwatch, grab my pick width from the expression field, and drag it to the stopwatch of the start this time. Not the stop, not the end, but the start. Got to click out of my expression field, move forward to where I wanted to start drawing on, adjust this to the amount. Right there, nice little circle. So here's our tight little draw on, draw off till it hits the logo. And since we stopped animating that start point, we've got the rest of the shape. So it's just that pick whip expression to the start and the end of the trim pads that gives you this nice logo draw on. The shape, right here, let me hide the bottom. Instead of a path, like you see here, nice thin path. For the glow draw on, I actually traced the outside of the logo and I gave it a yellow glow and my stroke has a gradient. I clicked the word stroke, chose a radial gradient, fine. So now when I do a draw off or draw on, I'm just gonna do one stopwatch however long I want that to be. And you'll see it's gonna go around the logo. And I want it to be nice and tight, so about one frame apart. Like that, that's how you get that glow. And I'm gonna move this one frame past it. So I get that glow going around it. Like such. And again, that glow, here's my effects. And I made it 32 bits per channel by holding down Alt or Option and clicking on the bits per channel right there. And I hope that helps and gives you a little bit more of an understanding of trim pads. Start, stop, as well as going from one path right there. This is the path and you see it's just one stroke that it's following as opposed to right here where it's a closed shape it's going around both edges. Trim pads can be very versatile. They could also be used as alpha mats. It's one of the main building blocks of motion design. So I'm glad you had this advanced question so we could dive a little bit deeper into trim pads and get a little bit more technical with expressions. Any other questions, feel free to reach out to me before class Wednesday night or just you know bring your work to class and show me.